Hello and welcome to Spencer's Library. I'm Claudia and today I'm reviewing The Goose Girl by Shannon Hale. This is a fantasy novel that was originally published in 2003 but I have only just read it. Um, this is the first part in a four-part series of books and it is actually a retelling of an old Brothers Grimm fairy tale which I also have. So I don't actually remember if I was aware of the fairy tale The Goose Girl, which in its original German is called Die Gänsemarkt. Um, I feel like I was aware of that fairy tale growing up, but then if you grow up in Germany there's so many grim fairy tales you just kind of absorb. Um, so I don't have distinctive memories of reading the original fairy tale as a child, but when I read it now it did seem a little bit familiar. So um, this novel is a retelling of the old 19th century German fairy tale. Both stories follow a young princess who is on her way to marry a prince from another country. She's betrothed to him and she is on the way to marry him. But along the way some mishaps happen and when she gets to the other country she doesn't get there as a princess but has to live as a goose maid um, until she manages to win her old position back. The original fairy tale is obviously just a few pages long and um, I was surprised by how closely the retelling sticks to that narrative. In pretty much every single story beat that is there in the original story uh, is, is also in the retelling, but uh, the author really filled out the gaps between those story beats and did a really good job at making sense of some of the weird fairy tale quirks. If you're familiar with 19th century fairy tales you know that some things just don't make a whole lot of sense and you're not quite sure whether maybe they made more sense um, in the 19th century or even earlier when these uh, when these stories were told orally or if they just didn't make sense back then either and they are just kind of weird quirks of the genre of fairy tale. For example the main character's hair colour plays a really important part both in the original tale and in the retelling. It doesn't make sense why it should play a really important part in the original tale, but then uh, in the retelling the author managed to build a world where the characters, the main character's hair colour is significant in a way that makes it then fit with the original tale. I really enjoyed how this was built up. Um, the the story is really woven really well around those original story beats, but um, turned into a fun 20th, 21st century narrative to read as well. The main character uh, is obviously given a lot more personality in, in the retelling than she has in the original story, and there are many characters that uh, the author added to the story. And she did that really well. The world that she's built, mostly the two kingdoms that we get to meet, one of them is the Kingdom of Kildare, which is the main character's own kingdom where she's crown princess, and then the second kingdom is the much larger uh, Kingdom of Bayern. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be pronounced Bayern, but I am German and I'm going to pronounce it like the German state of Bayern. Um, that is really where most of the story takes place. Now what I found so attractive about this book is that it is what I like to call a reverse Cinderella narrative. You're familiar with the Cinderella style story structure where you have um, a, a person, a main character that lives in relative poverty, that is kind of underprivileged, that is has to fight and work hard and is uh, you know, in, in a typical fairy tale, either like a pauper or a servant of some kind, and then through the story they end up in the position of royalty, of a prince or a princess, so that's your typical Cinderella structure. But I really like stories that are the other way around. In this book, and of course in the original fairy tale as well, the main character, who in the retelling is called Annie Dory, starts off from a position of power and wealth and privilege. 
as the crown princess of this kingdom. She's expected to succeed her mother on the throne. She's ex expected to rule her kingdom. And then through some unfortunate events and evil villainous plotting, she ends up in this foreign country with nothing and even her identity is being taken away from her because suddenly she's not the crown princess, she is just a random peasant and she has to work and she has to survive and she has to work her way, not even necessarily work her way back to power and wealth, but just work her way back to safety. I find those kinds of narratives really interesting to read. This is one of the reasons why I love um, Frances Hodgson Burnett's A Little Princess so much, because again, it's a similar concept. Um, you have someone who is privileged and wealthy and powerful, and then gets thrown into a situation that they are not equipped to deal with. Now, like most fairy tale, and in fact, fantasy heroines, uh, our main character, Annie, is special. And again, not just because of her royal blood, but also because of her magical abilities. Uh, specifically, she kind of has the power to talk to certain animals. And the way that that's done, I found very interesting as well. Again, that's something I really enjoy in fantasy literature is, is talking to animals trope. And in this case, it's mostly, especially when she talks to birds, it is her physically imitating the noise that birds make. So she would be chirping and like honking and screeching and making all these noises in order to communicate with the birds. And it is described as, you know, someone learning a foreign language. That was one aspect of this book that I, that I really enjoyed how it was done. And that's actually one aspect of the book that is missing from the original fairy tale. So there's no, there's no magical bird talking going on in the original fairy tale. Other than that, this has all of the things that we love about fantasy that's written for and about young people specifically. It's got a really magical world, but where the magic makes sense. It's got some amazing sort of mental figures. It's got some really beautiful friendships. I, I always like that in any story when we have real meaningful relationships between the main character and other people that don't just serve to propel the plot. It's got a really nice, sweet romance that is woven into the plot really well. Um, as you can imagine, a, a book that is about a marriage or, you know, a princess that has to get married to a foreign prince, there's of course going to be some romance going on. And it's got lots of really characterful animals. Like, I have to say one of my favourite characters in this book is this random goose um, who <laughs> at some point in the novel gets lost and then the main character kind of finds him and sort of nurses him back to health. And he's an absolutely hilarious personality that is a goose. Uh, so this is a really charming, magical book. I can't wait to read the other three novels in the series. I'm not entirely sure if they are also fairy tale retellings of different fairy tales or if they take this story further um, into its own thing. But I can only recommend this book to you if you enjoy fairy tale retellings, definitely. If you enjoy fantasy in general. And I can recommend it whether you have read the original tale or not. You don't really need the knowledge of the original tale to enjoy this retelling. However, since the original tale is only two or three pages long, if you intend to pick up this book, then I recommend you read both. Maybe read this one first if you don't want to get spoiled, because obviously uh, the original fairy tale will, <laughs> within 10 minutes, spoiler most of the plot of this book but I would definitely recommend reading them in parallel or reading this one first and then the original after. Really very interesting and very enjoyable take on the fairy tale retelling genre and this is a genre that I am really keen to explore more of. So let me know uh, how you enjoyed this book, if you've read it, if you read it a long time ago, tell me all of your memories about it and if you've only discovered it recently let me know your thoughts as well. Thank you for watching, bye!